Hi, uh, this is a video about what it's actually like to be a chemical engineer and I thought that this would be an interesting topic because it seems like everybody wants to be a chemical engineer but nobody uh, makes it or everyone's got this idea of what it's going to be like and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not really what it's like. I just noticed that whenever um, on an airplane or in a bar and talking about you know what you do and you talk to an accountant and stuff uh, people tend to ask you a lot more questions about your career and um, I think that's it's kind of a sign that I, I must have a job that's pretty unique and interesting uh, so I, I just want to brush over what uh, my experiences are like so first of all, you t you get uh, pretty much uh, anyone that wants to get into uh, chemical engineering anyway. Uh, pretty much has to have a four-year degree. It didn't used to be uh, quite like that. Uh, it used to be that you could. There was a possibility that if you spent enough time and you worked on the floor as a an, um, you know an hourly or union guy you had the chance to work into management but nowadays it's not practical to actually uh, make that jump but if you uh, if you go to school um, and you, you take the hard classes and you man up and you work uh, I think this is a career that uh, kind of pays off in spades uh, you actually get a job and you uh, get paid uh, like it's worth going to school um, but uh, typically what uh, an entry-level uh, engineer will get an offer for a position called a process engineer. A process engineer um, is just kind of, it's, it's like a baby step. Uh, employers know, your bosses know that you, uh, you're you not, uh, you know, your skills are marginal at best. Uh, but you must have done something right to get, get, to get through school. So what the process engineering uh, job kind of does is introduces you to uh, industry or your career, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, a lot of these uh, kids coming up think that, you know, chemical engineer, I got to know everything about chemistry. You have to know nothing about chemistry. I mean, at least for what I do, uh, I've run, I work in uh, in a kind of continuous industry. There's uh, batch industries like uh, like pharmaceutical companies hire uh, kids that probably need to know a little bit about organic chemistry. But in general, uh, if you if you run a reactor, uh, you'll basically get a chart and it'll say uh, your residence time needs to be X amount of minutes and what you can do for optimizing pH and you know generally the chart is as far as you can go in one direction and you push the process as far as it can go in that direction and you try to document cost savings and what you uh, did that's worth value and um, this is this is kind of uh, kind of the path that I think that you should go if you get this far uh, is the industrial um, setting or you know, working in industry versus, uh, to me, there's there's kind of three paths. Uh, you can work in research, which can be public or private. Uh, research to me is extremely boring. Uh, you'll work in labs, and you, to me, it's just, it's kind of dumb to go, you can't even get a research position unless you go to, uh, you know, get a doctorate, basically. So you, you get your doctorate, uh, and then you work a boring job, and you and does it even pay off a doctorate? You might, might not even pay off. Can you? And the reason I got into chemistry was money. <laughs> uh, so you get into chemistry, uh, you uh, finish your bachelor's, and in general, you have kind of two paths to pursue. You can go down the uh, the process engineering route or the uh, um, the applications engineer and this is technical sales and this is not a job that you want 
personally for me, uh, you basically try to go around and hawk your wares or sell, you know, this, that, or the other thing, your, your snake oil, <laughs> what have you. Um, and it's very, uh, you know, it can be lucrative, it can be competitive. And, uh, you know, some guys, uh, some guys do all right, uh, other guys don't. There's two kinds of, uh, two kind, two kinds of uh, application engineers. Uh, there's the farmer, and then there's the hunter. And the farmer uh, will work with the process engineer or whoever, and and try to get their product to work. And then the hunter is the guy that that gets it in the mill, or gets it in the plant, and you know it's there. And I'm gonna go find another plant to sell this to. <laughs> you know, the, that's kind of the mentality of the hunter. And it's uh, basically driven more by the employer than anybody. But uh, that's, uh, like I said, if you have a choice between two offers, uh, I, would, I would kind of lean towards working for an industry where you're going to, you know, you're not going to travel. You're going to sit in your mill and you're going to try to optimize that position. And you're going to have uh, promotion opportunities. Um, and then usually the second stage in an engineer's career, uh, three to five years down the line, uh, usually they'll get uh, a title of production engineer. Now this moves away from your trials and your uh, running different chemistries to evaluate or you know trying to look at processes and, and tweak things and optimize uh, unit operations and unit processes and uh, this is a this is a longer hour type job you know you're gonna you're gonna put in the hours and you're gonna work um, you document why you have downtime and you oversee uh, maintenance items and kind of uh, it's a it's a pretty um, it's a it's definitely a lifestyle you know you get money but uh, you have more time commitment than you did as a process guy. Uh, and also I'd like to speak a little bit uh, about why this is different than, um, why chemistry is a little different than, or radically different than any other discipline of engineering. Uh, I work with mostly mechanicals and electricals, and uh, the mechanical and electrical guys are uh, maintenance guys. They're guys that we, um, I wouldn't say we, but I mean, if you work in a chemical industry, production guys are typically uh, chemis, and maintenance guys are typically, uh, you know, your electrical guys or your, um, uh, what else, you know, electrical, mechanical, even industrial, uh, industrial, basically your mechanical, electrical, if you want to work on roads or build, uh, dams or something, then you become a, a civil or um, environmental. We have environmental guys. They uh, they treat our wastewater a um, pretty boring job, too. Uh, kind of, uh, if you want to be the star attraction in your mill, uh, like you're going to have all these human resources guys, you're going to have all these uh, IT guys, but you're the guy that is, you know, working hands-on with what you do and you make the money and you make it happen uh, that's kind of what chemies do uh, everyone else is kind of uh, supporting cast in my eyes you know, humbly <laughs> but like I said you get the, um, the production production guys kind of tell uh, maintenance guys what they want out of processes or um, if something's malfunctioning, can they fix it, or can they do something uh, differently? And that's that's kind of uh, at least in industrial settings, that's what mechanical and electrical guys do. Mechanical guys will be out on the floor a little bit more. Electrical guys will be on the computer all day long. Um, I'm on the computer quite a bit. Uh, I'm on the floor quite a bit. It depends. It's every day is different. Every week's different. And typically you have, uh, uh, starting out anyway as a process guy, you will usually have a technician too uh, that you uh, kind of feed work to.